Alright, so here we go for a video on the mode. Now we'll look at the definition of the mode, and then we'll assess how it fares against the mean and the median, and look at the relationships between all three. And finally, in this video, I've come up with what I think is a cracking challenge question. So let's rip straight into it, shall we? So here's the mode. It comes from the Latin modus, or mood, and again it has a musical connotation, in that the mode of a piece of music is kind of like the emotional setting. And it's also used in the French for fashion, right? If something's à la mode, it means it's very fashionable. And that's why quite uniquely, the derivation of this word really gives us an indication as to what this means statistically. So the definition of the mode is that, is that it is the observation with the highest frequency. We well, can kind of think of it as the most fashionable observation, right? So in this data set, the one we've been dealing with in the last few videos, 28 happens to be the observation with the highest frequency, so that is our mode. Now, as we'll find out, unlike other measures of central tendency, like the mean and the median, the mode is quite fickle in small samples. So say we just changed this observation from 28 to 27. What's the mode now? You might say, well, there's no mode anymore. Or alternatively, you can, you can actually say there are five modes, each with a frequency of one. So it was only because it kind of fluked it in the first example where two of the observations just happened to be the same that we actually got an answer for the mode in the first place. And if I created a data set that just again had by chance two observations that were the same up on the high side up here, well, the mode's gonna be 54. And is that really the greatest representation of the central tendency of this data set? Probably not, right? So as I said, the mode sucks for small samples. Of course, this little icon being the best representation I have of me available. Doesn't really look like me, but I do respect the lack of arms on the glasses. I might try to make that my own little fashion statement. But of course, the mode comes into its own when we actually have a decent sized sample. So here's a pretty decent sized sample when we have a census, right? Now, there was one in Australia a few years ago, and any Australian viewers will probably be watching this with a wry smile, because that certainly went off without a hitch, didn't it? But here's the census question. How many children are in your family? Now, I have changed this a little bit for simplicity. I've gotten rid of the families with no children. So these are just families with children. And let's just say there are 5 million families. In the distribution here, we can see that 1.5 million of them have one child in the family. 1.8 million have two kids. 1 million have three, etc., etc. And so 0.1 or 100,000 families have six or more children. So quite clearly here, the mode is two, right? Because that is going to be the observation with the highest frequency. And you can visualize this in a bar chart if you like. Again, this is the number of children per family and two children has the highest number of observations. So the mode is two. But just for the record, do we know what the median and the mean are for this distribution? See if you can pause the video here and find both the median and the mean. So you've had a go? Well, to find the median, we know that there's five million observations. So we're roughly gonna to try to find the middle observation, right? which is the 2.5, 2.5th million observation when we order them from smallest to largest. So you can see that we exhaust 1.5 million just at the ones and collectively we're exhausting 3.3 million by the end of the twos. So that 2.5th million observation is in the twos as well. So our median will also be two. But what about our mean? Well, technically we can't find the mean because we don't quite know all of these. We'd have to just say that all of these observations are exactly six kids. And if that was the case, you'd find the mean is 2.26. Essentially, that's just multiplying each of these number of children by the number of families, summing them up and dividing by five. 
It's a little weighted mean calculation there. But we'll see that in various distributions, the mode can be different from the median and they can both be different from the mean. And let's have a look at that when we, when we go to our advanced section on mean, median and mode. Okay, so let's have a look at the relationship between these three measures of central tendency. So when we're dealing with the symmetric distribution, much like this bell curve, that's very common in statistics, you might call that a normal distribution. In this instance, the mean is going to equal the median, which is going to equal the mode, and they'll all exist right in the center of this distribution. What about this symmetric distribution? Now, in this case, the mean is going to equal the median again. But what is the mode here? What is the highest point on this plot? Well, in this case, it's actually bimodal. There are two modes, two points of equal frequency. And so I guess you can say that mean is equal to the median in this case. But we have a bimodal situation here. Now, this is a very curious scenario, and you won't often get something that looks like this. But we do have that word bimodal which is used generally to mean where there are two discrete peaks in a distribution. But let's now look at an asymmetric distribution because this is kind of where it gets interesting. So if we have a positively skewed distribution, like so, the mode is going to be the highest point on the plot, right? The most fashionable point. Highest frequency, there's the mode. Now what happens in this scenario where we might have a long positive tail and by the way, we call it positively skewed because the tail points in the positive direction. What happens here is that the median gets dragged up a little bit. And I've probably overemphasized that gap there, but just for the sake of visualization, the median gets pulled up a bit and the mean gets pulled up even further. So what happens when you get these very large observations on one side or a sort of long tail on one side of the distribution? is that these three measures get separated and they tend to get separated in this order, mode to median to mean. So if this is say house prices, where the bulk of the house prices are down here and then you slowly get some really high value houses up to the top end of this distribution, those very high value houses, so say the ones worth millions of dollars, they're dragging up the mean, but they're not even touching the mode, right? And a clump of really expensive houses is only pulling up the median a little bit. And in, this, and in this case, all three measures are totally appropriate in their own way. It depends what you're kind of measuring. In particular, you might use the median when you're dealing with things like income or house prices or things like that. But the mean might be useful in other situations too. And same with the mode. It really depends on the context. So here's my challenge question to you. And this one's really tough. We know that for positively skewed data, the following relationship holds where the mode is less than the median and that's less than the mean. Can you create a sample comprised of only integer values from zero to 10 where the alternate relationship holds? And that's where the median is less than the mode, which is less than the mean. So I've kind of swapped these two around. So can you come up with a sample of data that's made up only of integers where your median is less than your mode and make it a single mode, right? I'm not allowing bimodal samples here. And both of those are less than the mean. Now I've tried this and I can only come up with one exact sample that, where this relationship holds. So I'm keen to see if you can find that one or indeed if there are other ones out there that I've missed. So feel free to put your answer up in the comments and I'm keen to see if we can construct this very curious distribution. So that's it. If you like this video, you might want to see all of the others up on zstatistics.com or else you can subscribe to the channel and do all those kind of things or just say hi. Any feedback is very much appreciated. My name's Justin Zeltzer and I'll see you in the next video for Quantiles.